everybody. Welcome back to Stitching Big Things with Hallie. I'm Hallie. Thanks so much for joining me again today. Today is Friday, August 19th, 2022. How has everybody been? I know it's been three weeks since I've seen you and I'm sorry for that. We've just had things get crazy busy. We had unexpected visitors that arrived. Uh, they called the day before they showed up and um, let us know they were coming. It was my in-laws and it was so good to see them. I was so excited and so happy uh, that they were coming. It has been since before COVID that we've seen them. So it's been a long, long time. Um, and so, um, so we had that. Um, my husband was going to do a staycation also that week. Um, and so I think that was part of the reason they were coming because he was going to be off and they could spend a lot of time with him and with the kids before they went back to school, all the stuff. So it was great. It was good. The only problem we had was the Thursday, the day they called, um, they were coming on Friday. When my husband got home from work, I said, honey, you do not look well. I think you better take a COVID test. And he did. And he was positive. <laughs> And so I was like, uh-oh, we better call your mom and dad before they hit the road in the morning and let them know. And they chose to come anyway. So grateful that they came, but we were both concerned about keeping them safe. Everybody's been vaccinated, all the stuff. It's just, we don't want anybody even to just get a little cold. We don't want anything. So, and I didn't, you know, we had to keep, the kids were home. So we had to keep, we were trying to keep them safe too. So um you know we were super diligent um he was good about wearing his mask and staying as far away from us as he could until he really started to feel better um, his symptoms were super super mild which was great it was a real blessing for us it was really just like a little cold um in fact he'd worked the whole day before we took the test so you know um he was just tired and so they ended up coming regardless we kept them safe Nobody else has gotten it, which is great, but it does add that extra, you know, you've got extra guests in your home. Um, plus, you know, everybody's here all the time, husband's home all day, you know, so just lots going on. So I apologize I didn't get to it last week. They were still here and we were still enjoying our time together. Since then, um, Monday, we took my uh, second son, who is a junior at Baylor University, we took him back to school. Classes officially start uh, next Monday, but you know, they've got a house with five guys and who doesn't wanna hang out with your friends before, for a week before school starts. So um, we moved him back in, all was great, and he's doing well. So then yesterday we had back to school for my high schoolers. So that was super exciting. This year I will have a senior and a freshman. So that is super nice. Uh, having them both on the same schedule, both going the same direction. Um, you know, obviously my senior can drive, so that's super, super helpful. I'm adjusting to maybe not being needed for as much running as I have been and kind of really communicating with, you know, when are you coming? When are you going? Do I need to get mace? So you, you know, so there's just a lot of that that's happening and we're trying to get adjusted back to the schedule. So that's what's been going on. That's one of the reasons why, those are all the reasons why I didn't film last week and I didn't have a lot of stitching done either because there's just, when you have guests, there's just a lot going on. So anyway, all of that said, I have a few things that I want to talk to you about. The first thing is let's talk July numbers. It's been a while since I've seen you guys and we still had two days left of the month when I recorded last time. So I do want to report my July numbers just real quickly because you know, I like to keep track of that. My total for July, it was low again, was 11,050. So I didn't look to see how it related to the previous July. Doesn't really matter, I guess. Um, full coverage, because I do break it, full coverage, non-full coverage, 4,300 even. How does that happen? Uh, for full coverage, non-full coverage was 6,750, and I did have four non-stitchy days. So, they're okay numbers. Again, like I always say, I don't share my numbers to make you feel good or bad about yours. They're simply information. They let me help uh, plan and, and really give me a good reflection on kind of what's going on um, and how busy life is. So 
So that's the first thing. The second thing I wanted to share with you is a few weeks ago I talked about, I think it was two videos ago, I talked about some secret stitching that I was doing. And I am gonna put a video in here because I wanna show you what I stitched. I have now sent it to the recipient and they have gotten it. And it's just a small little Texas pillow, but let me give you the background on this. If you watched my StitchCon video, I think I talked about the lady at my table, Sandy, who was super, super kind and jumped up and exchanged the, uh, the last person, uh, her uh, exchange piece was the one that was left on the, on the table. And so she was gonna get her own exchange piece and that's not the intention, it was just the way it worked out. And Sandy, we were right by that table. She had not opened hers yet and she realized what had happened and she jumped up and she exchanged with that lady. And so I was just super impressed with her willingness to give to someone else. And, and she'd not looked in, in either one, it didn't matter. It was just, I was just uh, pleased by her kindness and her generosity. And so I had said to the table, hey, maybe we would like to, uh, stitch Sandy a small. I don't know if you all are interested, but I think I'm going to, and I'm going to send it to her. A number of the group, I think everybody <laughs> agreed at the table, and we all found a common pattern. We found um, the patterns that you stitch your state. I didn't, I didn't bring it with me. I'm sorry. I'll put it at the bottom, the name of the pattern and um, uh, the designer because I didn't bring the pattern, I stuck, it's gone. Um, so anyway, we all agreed we would do our own state, we would stitch them up, and we would send them all to Sandy as a small, just to let her know that we loved her and how impressed we were with her uh, generosity. So that's what I did, that is my uh, stitching. Um, I did change the colors just because I used, I used what I had, and I have, honestly, you guys know my theory, um, I don't do a lot of pillows because pillows become footballs in my house, but I decided I was gonna hand stitch this pillow because I don't know how to sew with a sewing machine either. And so I can at least follow a straight line. I could just you know turn everything inside out and go along the fabric and keep it in a straight line. So I thought overall it turned out very well. I did ask Sandy when I sent her to her, please don't look too closely, just appreciate it for what it is and remember what the intention of it was, was um, I enjoyed thinking about her as I stitched it and it was totally sent with love. So uh, I did want to share that with you. So that's what that secret stitching was. I know Sandy has gotten it and she loves it. Um, I'm assuming everybody else's has arrived um, as well. So I thought I would share that with you guys. The other thing that I wanted to share with you guys is something kind of unique. Um, it's been a few months ago. And if you guys are fans or if you watch uh, Karen, um, the needle bug, um, I, if you're not, I recommend you go watch her. Wonderful stitcher, Karen Bug. Uh, wonderful stitcher. She does a lot of full coverage. She does some samplers. Um, beautiful work. She also gives back a lot to, in my opinion, to her channel and she teaches she uh, is kind of the one who uh, really made popular the diagonal stitching. She does a lot of basic um, education for people who are learning or new or want to refresh. And so I just, I've always been impressed with how much time and energy Karen puts into her channel and how much she gives to her viewers. And so a few months ago, she brought to everybody's attention on her channel that she was struggling with seeing her higher count fabrics and that she gave away all of her higher count fabrics. She stopped many of her projects and actually gave away some of her projects that were higher count fabrics that she just, she couldn't see to enjoy them to stitch on them anymore. Even with her magnifier, it was just, she had just gone beyond that. And unfortunately, we're all gonna get there at some day. And, and that day happened to be Karen's. And the one that she really hated to give away and to really stop was her pandemic. And she had done beautifully on it. And I'm stitching pandemic, many of us are, and, and that's the one that she hated, but it just was too, too small. She couldn't see it. 
and, and it was affecting her eyes later in the day and so on and so forth. Hopefully you guys have all been subscribed to her channel and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, it kind of came to um, a lady's attention that maybe she would like to get that fabric, that piece from her, and then she would stitch it for her and send it back. And there were actually a number of us that kind of felt that way. And um, so I put my name on the list and there's a group of us that are passing around her pandemic and we're stitching it, all of us together. Well, I mean, when we get it, we stitch our part for as long as we want and then we move it on. Well, this week was my week. Um, it just arrived a day ago. And so I thought I'd share it with you before I do any stitching on it because you are gonna see me stitch on it. Um, Cause I'm gonna keep it for, you know, a few weeks and do my best on it. And then I'm gonna move it on to the next person in line. So here is uh, the project currently. Absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. If you look at the top, the ladies uh, it started with Karen. She put her name and then it has moved on down. Uh, Susan and Jennifer and Nicole and Mary Lee and, and I'm going to be next. And so we've all put our stitches into this. And then she asked us to put our name around it so she would know who stitched it. So I am super excited. Uh, this It came with the fabric and it came with a big cone um, of the color that she's using. And I don't know any details. It looks like a 28 and it looks like it's stitched over one. Um, that would be my guess just looking at it. Um, but it's my turn. And I'm super, super excited and um, very happy that I'm going to get to put some stitches in this and then be able to send it on. And ultimately my stitching is going to be back with Karen who has given so much to me personally, as well as her other viewers, um, that I could help. So, um, excited to see that. And you guys will see those stitches getting put in in the next few weeks. So, I think that brings me up to my stitching. Quite a lot, I know, I had a lot to talk about early in this video. But let's get to my stitching. I did not work on very many projects this week. It seemed like whatever I was working on was just calling to me. And so I continued. I put some diligent stitches into Cookie Fairy by Randall Spangler from Heaven and Earth Designs. You guys know if you've been with me for any amount of time, this is my kind of focus um, paid uh, focus full coverage for them for this year and if you were with me last uh, time I videoed on the last video you got to see that I moved um, I moved the Q-snap and had really completed quite a bit of the top so um, I was able to add in this time 2473 stitches so that um, was able to complete one of the challenges I use uh, full coverage fanatics whips and wonders challenges for my full coverage uh, projects and to complete one of those it requires 5,000 stitches so those uh, extra numbers were able to complete um, one of the wonders which was great um, and I don't intend to stop I still have a few more uh, yeah I want to keep working on it so here is where I am at I am kind of stitching all over you guys. It's super, super crazy. At first I thought I'd kind of work up here and try and get a little of this blanket. There was a lot of jumping around. I'm like, why are you jumping around? Go get some, go get some structure in this. So then I started with the black. Here you can see the fairy. And here you can see the cookie. And that's it, y'all. That's the bottom. Right down here is the bottom of the project. Yeah, I think it goes a little bit lower, probably two or three lines lower, because I think we've got some blanket, some bed blanket underneath. But it is all, not all, because there's a little bit that's going to go over here. You can start to see, um, this is the candle uh, opera stick, candlestick um, holder. So you can see that, and we all know that I have a little bit over the edge over here, but we'll get there eventually. But if I get this much done, I'm, I am right close to the end. So 
super, super excited about this. This puts me at, with these stitches that I put in, puts me at 59.1% according to my pattern keeper. So excited. So um, definitely excited to start seeing um, some of those elements up here. Um, just so you know, I am stitching this on 25 count Easy Grid fabric, stitching it one strand over one uh, cross, one X. So, and I'm doing full cross. So, okay. Uh, the next thing I pulled out, you guys saw it last week as well, is my afghan. This has just been calling to me, and you probably are going to see it again next week because. It's super, super good. So I think I talked last time I made a video about Whipgo. Those Whipgo numbers had already been called. I used this one for the seven day challenge. So uh, I added in 2,905 stitches on this for uh, over the seven days, averaged about 415 stitches uh, a day. So and I thought that I would show you where I got to, and my needle is still hanging, so I'm gonna pull it through and tack it up. So, I had just dropped down, well, I think I'd finished up here. I dropped down, start, had just started some of this curly cue and had kind of gotten these two in. So I was able to get all of the pumpkin finished and uh, and working. This is kind of the page finish. You can kind of see it here. Other than these few stitches here, I, that page was done. So I had these colors out. I'm like, let's just keep going. And I went ahead and got um, the N because I'm kind of working backwards. Um, let me show you. Um, this is the back and this is where you can actually see it easier. So I'd started, I did one through five. I came down and did 10. And then I'm moving over and doing nine. So I'm kind of going backwards down the row. Um, so, and you can see where that's split. So did almost all of 10 and just a little, uh, got a good start on nine. And I'm gonna keep going because I've got all these colors out. So excited about that. So let me give you the details for this. This is uh, Stony Creek, uh, F, or, um, Halloween Village Afghan. I, just so you guys know, I bought all of my materials and all of my threads from Stony Creek. I just went on their website, hit all, uh, purchase all. So it gave me all the, if you see on the back, you can see some of them needed a whole lot of skeins, you know, 12 skeins, 11 skeins. So I was going to show you my stash of skeins that I got as well, because that's kind of fun to look at too. Um, black, 38 skeins. Yeah, it's a lot of black in this. Um, but I do want to tell you, I am stitching this on 20 count light ash gray Lugana, stitched two threads over four strands. I did, so four strands of floss over two threads. So it eats up a ton of floss. I did have somebody ask um, about the five inches, it is five inches of fabric. So what I did was I went down five and in five and that was my corner. So um, yeah, just do five and you should be good. That should be getting you right in the middle and you should have approximately five inches around the entire thing, which is plenty to, to uh, pull the strands out and get the pieces for the afghan. So I've not, I've had it unravel a little bit. You can see it unravels a little bit, but eventually that's all gonna unravel anyway because it's gonna be stringed. So it doesn't, if you look on here, you can see like you, you pull all those out anyway because you're getting the fringe for the bottom. So if you lose a few here and there, it doesn't really matter. But I have found it doesn't really, like it doesn't unravel easily, so. Um, what else did I want to say about this? So that's what I did, five in, five over. Oh, I wanted to show you my package of floss. This is my package of extra floss. There are a lot. Um, sorry for the crinkle, but lots and lots. There's 
blacks, which I've used a lot of. I've, I think I've scavenged some of these blacks out. This one. Oops. And this one. So this, when I tell you it eats up a bunch of thread, it eats up a bunch of thread. It's so fun. It stitches. It really does. You feel like it stitches fast because you're using four threads and you're, you're crossing a lot of territory. Like, this is a lot of territory. It feels really good to get those that done. So um, I've been very excited about that. I had a number of people on my last video when I mentioned that I did do the Christmas um, Afghan ask if I would show my Christmas Afghan. And I absolutely will. I brought it with me today. I've showed it a couple times in different I've, earlier videos. I think I showed it on my interview with Sambri Stitches. But let's look at it again because, you know, who doesn't want to see it? Now, I will tell you, I have never finished it and never fringed it. It has been folded up and put in my, my drawer that I keep my finished projects in since I finished it. I finished it probably eight years ago, eight, ten years ago. So it's been a while. I, we were still, we were in a different house. That's how I remember. <laughs> um, and the way I did this one, it was a little different. Um, they had um, a magazine and um, you would order the magazine and Stony Creek had, would put four um, sections because there's, you know, there's a lot of sections. They put four sections in each magazine and so and you got it like four times a year and so and I was behind when I started they they were like in the second section so I was playing catch up and I was working ahead but each time I got a magazine I would just keep working keep working keep working by the time I got done it took like two and a half years to get all the magazines even to get it finished and I just kept working by the time I got to the end I was waiting on the last magazine to come so I could finish it so I did get caught up, I did get ahead a little bit, but it did take a while. And that was, the, that, that was back in the day when my kids were significantly younger, there was a lot more running happening on my part, and I was only a monogamous stitcher. So this was all I was working on. I didn't work on anything else. So um, my intention for this is never to, I'm not gonna back it, I'm not gonna do anything like that. It's never gonna be an active user Afghan, it's like a Christmas decoration, if it ever comes out of my drawer. Because you guys know, if you know me, I'm kind of a process stitcher. I mean, I love the final project and I love to see it, but um, like I just wanted, my goal for this was, can I stick with it long enough to complete it? And I proved to myself that I could. So I have this beautiful Afghan. Enough of the talk, Hallie. Get to showing the afghan. Okay, I gotta back up. May even have to stand up. So I will have to do this a piece at a time. Hold on, let me move my chair. Okay, here's the top of it. It's good size. I'll just kind of roll it up for you. I gotta tell you what, I'm gonna bring it in. This tree was one of my favorite things to stitch. And it's big. It's a big old tree, this house. Look at this house. Absolutely gorgeous. So fun, the little barn, the church. Snowman, the little birdies. Okay, let me back up for you again. The little present. Goodwill to all. And then you've got the border on this side. So sorry, I know it is so hard to show because it's huge. It is huge. It literally is on the floor. I am 5'6", and it's touching my toes, and it's right at my nose. So it is a, it, it's a blanket. It really is. So, but it's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. Actually seeing this, it makes me want to finish it and get it out for this next Christmas. It really does. I've not, I've not really had that desire until really showing it now. Love that tree. It was so fun to stitch. 
so, so fun. So thank you. Thank you all. Anybody who requested um, that I show that, um, thank you. Uh, you made me get it out again, and I really, really appreciate it. It's, it's a beautiful piece, and I do think I want to finish it this year. Um, I do have the instructions on how to stitch along the edge and create a, a, basically a seam, and then you just start pulling out and you fringe the rest of it. So, fingers crossed, I'll stick with that and I'll actually get it done. And if I do, we'll celebrate again together. I'll show it again. So, if you have any questions about either afghan, by all means, either drop a comment down below, I'd be happy to answer it for you, or send me an email at uh, stitchingbigthingswithhally at gmail.com. I know I did get an email and about how far down and how far over, and I'm sorry I didn't reply. I Hopefully you're seeing this video and um, you'll understand. Here's an example. You know, down five, in five. And it gives you a good amount left so that you can fringe it. And if you're just a smidge off, you know, if one is a little longer, it's not a big deal. You can just trim it. So, but you want to try and get as close as possible. So, good luck, everybody. If you're stitching it, hang in there. Keep going. Keep going. Um, it's really great when we get to the end. So, and I'm super excited. As soon as we get through this, uh, this little banner here, then we get into the good stuff. We start getting into the houses and the trees and, and this gorgeous witch over here. So excited to get to that. Okay, enough about Afghan. Um, I have two other things and it kind of goes with a new start and it kind of goes with haul. So let me explain. Back when I was at StitchCon, one of the options that you could do is Susan from StitchCon would, you could make a request to her and she would take a chart and she would do whatever you wanted, jazz it up. Um, it was kind of called, I don't remember what it was called. Like, I don't remember what it was called, but it was kind of like, almost like, I don't even know how to explain it. Anyway, you could, you could leave it up to Susan. Someone else could pick your colors. So I decided I was gonna try that. I gave her a budget. My only request was that it be Christmas and not primitive. You could take something that was primitive and jazz it up because I'm not a primitive stitcher for the most part. So those were my requirements and I left it with them. Now, unfortunately I was supposed to get it back at StitchCon because they had such a run on all their fabric and floss and all that stuff. They wanted to restock to be able to get it um, Kind of put together appropriately and so I received it a few months later. So um, it was right after the last video, I think it was like that Friday, um, I got uh, my package. So it had two projects in it. Like I said, I had no idea what the projects were. Kind of like, um, you know, like you're just like, I don't know, it's a secret. Like you didn't know what was coming. So this was one of the choices that was made for me. This is Mary Mouse uh, from Brenda Gervais. And I mean, it's cute, probably not something I would stitch um, until I got her colors. She jazzed up the colors for me and she picked a different fabric. And all of it together, I absolutely wanted to stitch. She chose uh, a Fortnite Fabric Cozy Cave Linen that is a 36 count. I didn't even tell her what count. I didn't tell her linen versus Lugan. I didn't say any of that stuff. I just said, find me something and jazz it up. And so here are the colors. Um, I have already started it because I couldn't wait any longer. So, and, and this fabric is totally washing out. You cannot see it. There's, it, there's a little bit, the little hint of like mint green in it all that good stuff. And these are the colors that she jazzed it up to. So a lot more vibrant red, a lot more vibrant green, just a lot more um, than in the picture. So 
I was super excited about this one. So I'm excited to see what happens when we get to that Santa hat um, and see just how jazzy this is gonna be. So super excited about that. So I already started it. So I got about uh, 466 stitches in to that. And the nice thing is, is she gives me this full, I did add in, so I didn't have to keep going back to the original chart, but she gives you what it was called for and what she substituted it for, which was really nice. Makes it super, super, super easy. So that was one of the items, which was super fun. And this one I love as well. This one is Yule Queen. I don't even know who it's by. The Primitive Hair Yule Queen. Again, generally not something I'm going to choose. She did a really good job of spicing it up. Here is what the fabric she sent. So this lovely kind of minty green with almost like what I feel like is a little bit of chocolate. Uh, in there as well. Sorry, that's my phone that you're hearing. My text sound is Yoda who says, do or do not, there is no try. So, sorry about that. Let me catch this or you're gonna hear it again here in just a second. Um, and then she spiced up the colors and I was so excited on this fabric. Again, this is kind of washing out. Sorry, it's like a mint green with these kind of chocolatey pieces to it. And then she spiced it up with these colors. Instead of the black and gray, she gave me green and pink for her dress. So her dress is gonna be super, super different um, than it appears on here. And I absolutely am here for it. Right now it's kind of a silver and gray. And I can't wait to do the pink and green. On this green, I think it's gonna be absolutely fantastic. So super excited about that. Again, it did come with, um, all of my conversions already done for me. I just have to stitch it. So I was super excited. Thank you, Susan. You'll probably never see this video, um, but I appreciate all of your hard work. I appreciate it's kind of a skill and an art to be able to make conversions. And it's not one that I really have. So I appreciate the time and the effort that you put into it. It was well worth the wait. And if you are going to StitchCon next year and you um, enjoy finding something new, uh, kind of taking a little bit of a risk, because um, you not you don't know what you're going to get. And, and I could have picked a project and said, spice it up. I just, I wanted to have the total surprise. I love both projects. They would never have been anything I would have stitched had they not been spiced up but I'm looking forward to having them now and having them done. So you will see more of that one as well. So that those were the two haul pieces that I had. I'm sorry, I know I was supposed to wait on that little mouse one and I just couldn't wait any longer. I just needed something different uh, one of the days and so I grabbed it. So, okay, if you guys have made it this far, good on you, 33 minutes, holy cow. Um, Think that's pretty much it we're going to do a little bit of stitching on pandemic for uh, karen the needle bug probably going to keep working on that afghan need to get back to cookie still got some more full coverage items that i need to work on uh to meet my challenges so i've got a lot to do lots and lots of stitching time hopefully now that everybody's back on a normal schedule we can get to that so thank you so much for hanging with me this week. It has been a pleasure. Um, let me know down below, what are you working on? Send me an email, send me a picture. I am always excited to see um, what other people are stitching and I would love to know what you're working on. And um, so thanks so much. And don't forget, in between now and then, keep stitching those big things.